This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Which one is that? Uh, a reaction! This chisel test positive for blood! What? what? <laughs> I guess that proves my theory wasn't just nonsense. <laughs> Would this chisel be the murder weapon then? It reacts positively for blood. There's no doubt about that. Chisel data jotted down in the organizer. This case is getting intricate, isn't it? Mr. Sir Dogan, now that the murder weapon has been found, I must ask you for your testimony. We know how your dog got to the detention center, and we found the murder weapon. Do you still think you can talk your way out of this? <laughs> Interesting. He just moves the table and jumps down. <laughs> this guy, even at a time like this, he's still smiling. Well, Anubis... It seems like everyone has become suspicious of you. It's quite troubling, but since it has come to this, we have no choice but to tell Look the truth. Look at that truth. face. I did not kill anyone. I have long grown weary of killing. <coughs> he didn't. What's this? His face looks completely composed. His dog killed. Or maybe someone else killed and then the dog finished it. <laughs> it seems we need to listen to Mr. Dogan's explanation. Please promptly give your testimony. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. Dogen's explanation. First of all, I would like you to explain my motive. I do not know anyone by the name of Knightley. We share no oh, connection. Oh, right. Okay, well that's easy. So I wouldn't think some motive for murder would just appear out of nowhere. Or are you insinuating my Anubis had a motive? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just press on that? He only bears his fangs at others on my command. <laughs> Anubis is I hate that guy. <laughs> he stole the Scooby Snacks. <laughs> Anubis would definitely not be a Scooby-Doo type. No. I do not hunger for blood so much as to kill a man I do not even know. Uh, coming from an assassin, it sure is persuasive. <laughs> An assassin who only kills acquaintances? I doubt that would be profitable. <laughs> <laughs> I may kill strangers in my line of work, but I never make it personal. Is there evidence that shows a connection between Knightley and Dogen? Mm -hmm. I should thoroughly review the evidence once more. Well, this is a really easy one. <laughs> Dogen's explanation, because he has a dog. <laughs> I'd like you to explain why my <laughs> nameplate says boss. <laughs> You cannot kill without a motive. That's not true. That is completely not, not true. true. Hardly what I'd expect Von an assassin Karma is to like say. the complete... No, Von Karma totally had a motive. Eh, but not really. He was just like, it was destiny. I hated Gregory Edgeworth because he penalized me in court. And so I killed him and raised his son to be every food that he hates. I think... You, you know, pretty yeah, normal. Thanks. Very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> that literally was Bowser's That's voice. That's literally Bowser's voice. <laughs> Chain smoker, sorry. You cannot kill without a motive, hardly what I'd expect an assassin to say. <laughs> I don't spill blood needlessly. It may be required for my job, but not in my personal affairs. They're a little different. Isn't that right, Anubis? Anubis. I don't know anyone by the name of Knightley. You didn't know Knightley? It's not like you to say something like that. You overestimate me considerably. Did you have such a hard time arresting me in the past? We've already looked into it. You are the prison supplier. Naturally, you would have known about the other prisoners. Hold it. <laughs> Hearing one thing and knowing ten is just an ideal. It's true I do hear things. However, that doesn't mean that I know everything. I've never heard of anyone named Knightley. I wouldn't think some motive for murder would just appear out of no- I wouldn't just poof! <laughs> motive for murder! <laughs> you are an assassin. You do not require a motive to kill. Hey, Anubis. What do you think of this man? Is he an idiot, a fool, or possibly even a genius? You can drop the act, answer the question. But first consider this. 
Who am I? Before your eyes, you see the man you arrested yourself. The assassin Sirhan Dogen. For those I have needlessly killed, I chant a prayer. You ch what? <laughs> you, that, you're just ending it there? There? <laughs> I don't know. He's weird. I mean, he is Buddhist, so... The dog probably did not have a motive. Not all Buddhists might end their... No, 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 I meant he's a Buddhist, so he's praying. Pray. Oh, I not, was like... Well, he's a Buddhist, so obviously he's a serial killer. No. That, no, no, don't <laughs> no, take that out no, of context. No. I'm sure Buddhists are wonderful people. I think they're cool, probably. I think, um... Oh, yeah, remember uh, Brendan on Great British Breakout? He was a Buddhist. He was one of my favorite contestants. Brendan was a Buddhist? Yeah, we're where you like learned that literally in the last episode where you're just like, oh yeah, he's like this cool old guy like gardener, and then it's like last episode that like, last episode is like, oh yes, Brendan has uh, like <laughs> like goes with like enjoys like spending time with his Buddhist group. It's like, wait, oh, he was a Buddhist? I didn't know that. Okay. But that's like that's it. It's just yeah. like it's just chill. It's like, oh, like Yonda love Yonda. Yonda loves to garden. Yeah. And like... use hort do horticulture with her schnauzer. <laughs> <laughs> Today, she's making crackers in the shape of a ginger bread house. Yep. <laughs> Flavored with spiced curry and pickles. <laughs> uh, I love that show to death, though. <laughs> the dog probably did not have a motive. However, it has been trained to kill. Edgeworth would watch for the dog. Anubis, how could this man say such a thing? You poor thing. There, 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 there. There, the, there. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> the dog isn't you. He could have mistaken his target. In that case, wouldn't police dogs be equally untrustworthy? Ooh. If you still mean to suspect a new I mean, missile's not really trustworthy. <laughs> then you'll have to show me this evidence you're so fond of. Evidence? Gah. I don't have that kind of evidence. Okay, well, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> he only bears his fangs at my command. <laughs> <laughs> then, perhaps you ordered him to kill Miley. <laughs> Aren't we impatient? Haven't you forgotten the first thing I said? I don't know anyone called Knightley. Although you still insist I do, I'm afraid there's no evidence. Don't you think so too, Anubis? Good boy, good boy. Did the dog kill him, or did Dogen? If Dogen did not have the motive to kill, then he could not have murdered Knightley. First, I should show proof of some connection between Dogen and Knightley. Yeah. We share a connection, actually, because of the correspondence chess. He was about to beat me, so I killed him! <laughs> <laughs> You've lost your touch, Sir Handogan. If you had your dog clean up after you, you should have disposed of this, too. This is a record of a correspondence chess game found in the victim's cell. This record and the chessboard in your cell both clearly depict the same game. What? I've heard that the number of possible chess positions is around 10 to the 120th power. 10 times 10. To 120 times. Uh, 100, 1,000, um... Is that even a real number? Indeed. There's absolutely no way these two could have coincided by chance. Tell us your reason for killing Knightley! Unless you intend to explain this as a coincidence. <laughs> well, don't they say that the truth is stranger than fiction? It is as you said. This is merely a coincidence. But there's no way that could have happened. My correspondence chess opponent was the victim in this incident. <laughs> what a horrible coincidence. Aren't you shocked too, Anubis? Anubis. Uh, looks like we'll have to tell them the truth. Anubis, my boy. The animal show or something. something blah, blah, blah. That was when everyone left. Anubis brought the body to my cell. <laughs> he had already been stabbed in the neck with the murder weapon. I did not wish to be suspected, so I had Anubis carry the body to the workroom. Why did he bring the body there anyway? After that, he pulled out the murder weapon and returned it to me. Oh. So you're saying that the one who pulled the weapon out was Anubis? That 
That's right. If I pulled out the murder weapon here, the blood would have been a problem. I love how he's like an assassin, but he's still like a total dog lover. Yep. He's just like, oh, he's the cutie woo. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> like, if, he, if there weren't people in the room. Like, yeah. if he's just like, you're in the special cell alone, he's like, he's my cute dog. He's like carving his booty statue. Like, <laughs> in one hand, like, putting the dog at the other. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, isn't that what the Sonic guy said? A large black dog was biting into the neck of the victim. What? What did you say? It was a truly hellish scene. That dog! That dog killed him! I see. So that means Saw witnessed the moment the murder weapon was pulled out. Oh yes. That prisoner's testimony. It surprised me when I first heard it. How'd you hear it, bro? We told him about it. It's not often that Anubis makes a blunder like that. Right, boy. Look what I want to do. Now, I believe that explains my actions. I did not kill him. All I did was remove the murder weapon. Now, will that be all? Anubis is getting tired. Objection. Whoa there. That was his voice? You, we've heard it before. I didn't hear it. I was talking over it. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> Objection. Just a moment, Mr. Dogan. Mr. Shields. Isn't there one thing you haven't explained? Why would you need to pull out the murder weapon in the first place? That's right. I understand why he'd move the body to draw suspicion away from him. But he didn't need to retrieve the murder weapon. Maybe he just wanted to take it. I thought him just a fool, but how quickly his scent has changed. Raj, it was just plain. <laughs> yeah. That is literally this entire case. Basically. <laughs> Care to elaborate, Mr. Dogan? It was because of this bell. The bell attached to the murder weapon, and the bell on my dog's neck. They share a distinctive shape, wouldn't you say? The assassin Sirhan Dogan's trademark. An assassin's trademark? The blind assassin, Sirhan Dogan, he always appears at the sound of a bell. The sound of a bell ringing in the dark of night, it's said to be the last thing his target hears. Man, imagine when this guy, like, got his service dog. Mm -hmm. And because you have to like go to like a training thing, they're like, "Oh, like your cute little service dog." What a what cute you, black like, lab! Yeah, like what you gonna do with him? He's like, "I'm going to teach it to murder all of my assassins, like all no, of my like, clients, clients, they're not like, clients, the victims, <laughs> targets." Uh, yeah, I was like, like, "I want you to kill this person. I'll kill you <laughs> <my> instead." <laughs> <laughs> Reverse assassin. You wouldn't get any money that way. <laughs> he works for the government. <laughs> yeah, you remember well. It has been a while since you last saw my bells, after all. When I prosecuted you in court, I confiscated a knife with the bell attached to it. Yes, my bells. There are only two in the world. Only two? They're custom made, attached to my knife and Anubis's collar. Even though I can only rely on my ears, <laughs> I can easily identify them. Alas, one has been confiscated and is not in my possession. Dogen's bells jotted down. We're still getting more evidence! We almost have four pages! Yeah. When Anubis brought the body here, I heard a familiar sound. I thought my knife must have been embedded in the body. So imagine my confusion when I found out it was merely a chisel with my bell attached. Indeed, your knife is nothing like this chisel. Either way, those bells are my trademark. Moreover, I'm the only one in this prison who uses chisels. With all this, I knew I would be falsely suspected. <laughs> so I removed the murder weapon and hid it. So, you're claiming that you only moved the body? Didn't I tell you? That chisel isn't mine. If you think I'm lying, go ahead and check for my fingerprints. Sebastian? Nah, me? What, but how do I check for- Forensics. Y yes, ma'am! There's the other guard that's just been there. Uh, re 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 Reaction! We have fingerprints. They're Knightley's, Justine. What about Dogen's? No, just Knightley's. And there's no evidence the prints that will be when wiped either. Only Knightley's fingerprints. This guy's totally it, bluffing. It, it can't be. 
Um, sh should we re-examine re it? <laughs> See now, I never even touched that chisel. He doesn't need to. Because I ordered Anubis to carry it in his mouth. In other words, the fingerprints belong to the chisel's original owner. <sighs> the murder weapon's owner was the victim? Hmm, that is perplexing. At any rate, I did not touch the murder weapon. In other words, the killer could not have been me. <laughs> Isn't that right? Gah! I have nothing to refute that. How, how could this... Is he really not the killer? Could Dogen's testimony actually be true? This can't be. I kind of thought he wasn't the killer. I never really suspected him. Really? <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Because... Um, there's a few things. I feel like whoever murdered them has to be close enough to Nightly, other than, like, we play chess every two days. <laughs> other than that. Second, I think it had to be someone tied to the circus. Because I think that's just, like, too so, weird. So you're thinking it's either Regina or Simon? <laughs> or the Warden. Or the Warden. Or the warden. The warden's a circus performer, too. <laughs> no, but the, she's like, she loves the circus, and she's like, oh, this is amazing. She has all these animals coming in. They all she's got an her. alligator. She's got an alligator. Yeah, the alligator could have totally just been like, chomp. The alligator stabbed him with the chisel. <laughs> and, then, and then the alligator comes out of the water with the chisel. <laughs> and the granny swoops out of the closet. Ha-ha! <laughs> Only she was tied up. <laughs> Seems this is sufficient enough not to warrant any further explanation. As it stands, you have not changed the state of this case. I believe this is more than enough reason for us to relieve you of your badge. To save any needless fuss, I'd suggest you hand over your badge now. Th this is bad, sir! They sound serious! It's regrettable, but with those princes' decisive evidence, I'll have to rethink my logic from step one. But there are still many unexplained things. Why would Mr. Knightley be carrying a chisel? It could be used for many things. Perhaps even prison escapes. Well then, how did he carry it into the prison? I mean, the prisoners aren't even allowed cod cutlery. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth! Hmm? Even if your reasoning's off at first, you shouldn't let that confuse you. The most important thing is to arrive at the truth! Isn't that right? It doesn't matter how you get there. The end result is to save Simon, so we have to do everything we can for his sake. Well said, Kay! And then Edward starts crying. <laughs> Mass 1K, I really want to scout you for the law firm now. <laughs> Remember when Uncle Ray said a defense attorney never gives up? Give up, give up. Miles, <laughs> do you understand the true meaning behind those words? The true meaning of those words? Defense attorneys carry the fate of their client on their shoulders. You are the only person your client can rely on. Just like with Mr. Keys, we're the only ones who can save him now. We're linked by fate Mr. to our clients. Keys. That's why we must never give up. There's no way Uncle Ray can go against the teachings of Gregory. Okay, this is slowly turning into like Sonic Heroes. <laughs> the now true it's time superpower power of, of teamwork. teamwork. So, what will you do? Currently, I am a defense attorney's assistant. No, an assistant at my father's firm. I have made a commitment to this case. Therefore, if I don't save my client, I cannot say I've achieved it. I will abide by this. To save Simon Keys. No matter how many times my logic fails, I will always find another possibility. Okay, you're finally back. Well then, let's search for that other possibility. To start with, do you think there was a way Mr. Knightley could have brought the chisel into the prison? The method Knightley used to bring the chisel into the prison was... The board. The chess board. Normally, metal objects can't be brought into the detention center or the prison. They just be caught by the security gate. However, there is one way to avoid this. And that is, if they're sent in a package to the detention center. That gate is the only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. So they don't use a metal detector for that? This never should have happened. 
It seems the guards were too careless. The guards, like, in the room, like, right here, guys. No. I don't know, I don't know. What we'll yeah, that was nose them. pinch guy. Pinch Knowing this, Knightley asked Simon to send him a package. Yeah. Namely, a chessboard containing the chisel. Well, this has solved one of our problems. The fact that the chisel was not Mr. Dogan's, but Mr. Knightley's. Given this, one major issue remains. The security camera shows a dog attacking the victim. As long as that exists, I will maintain that Dogan is the killer. But... Dogen never touched the murder weapon. I'm stumped. We also desire a conclusion to this matter. Mr. Edgeworth, we can use one of my secret weapons, sir. Secret weapon number four, the video analyzing machine, Mr. Analysis. Why didn't he tell us about this sooner? What's with that ridiculous name? Uh, I named it myself, sir. This will let us analyze video footage in detail. Go ahead. You'll soon see I'm not lying. I don't know what will come of this, but all we can do now is investigate. Oh, man, we should get Little Thief. Mr. Edgeworth, do you know how to use Mr. Analysis? A video analysis machine. Should I hear how to use it? Detective Gumshoe, could you show me how to use it? Of course, sir! Fundamentally, it's the same as investigating a crime scene. You just examine anything that piques your curiosity. To examine, I just press the X button. Now, I'd like you to look at the buttons below the monitor. The left and right buttons will rewind and fast forward, respectively. And the center button lets you pause the video. Let's make good use of it to advance our investigation, sir. To rewind and fast forward, I use the Y and A buttons. And to pause, I use the B button. While paused, you can go to the previous frame or the next frame. You just use the same left and right buttons as before, sir. Next, I'll explain how to zoom in. Just point to the cursor at the area you want to zoom in on, and press the button on the upper left of Mr. Analysis. The one that says Zoom Plus. It seems I can also use the L button to zoom in. And after you've zoomed in, you can examine it just like you would be in the original image. Use the previous frame and the next frame buttons to examine frame by frame. But you can't actually play back the video in this mode, so keep that in mind. And what should I do if I want to zoom out? Just the top left button is Mr. Analysis again, sir. It's Zoom Minus. Now it should say Zoom Minus. And that concludes the explanation, sir. Well then, let's turn on Mr. Analysis. Use Mr. Analysis to examine any suspicious part of the video, sir. This is the video from the detention center's camera. I believe this was the moment when Knightley was being attacked by the dog. If that wasn't the case, then what does it show? Is the person in this video really Knightley? And what is the true form of the black silhouette attacking this person? I should check the video and try to find the answers to these two questions. There could be unexpected things in unexpected places. So be sure to check every nook and cranny of the video, sir. What part of the video is strange? I'm actually going to break out the pause button. No, no, no. I want to zoom in on this part. The- This is- I fear we may have made a grave miscalculation. This animal. This silhouette. Oh, it's No matter how you look at it, it is not a dog. Let's say it's, uh, the animal This animal is, is- A bear. From the silhouette, I'd say the animal is not a dog, but a bear. So then, in that photo I took... Those footprints must have belonged to this bear, yes. I was right about the bear mm -hmm. footprints. Did you say a bear? Yes, that man is the first to come to mind. Now that we know this black shadow isn't a dog, but a bear, there's a good possibility that the man being attacked is not Knightley. Whatever can show that man isn't Knightley, it should be somewhere in the video, wouldn't you say so? Uh, since his face is not visible, it would be difficult to get direct confirmation. Did he just appear from under the bed? However, perhaps there is something indirectly reflected. Something reflected? Hey, isn't there a mirror in the cell, sir? Indeed. That could be worth examining. What part of the video is strange? I 
see that mirror being poured. A reflection of this person can be seen in the mirror. Hmm? Is that a cap on his head? Actually, it looks kind of like the caps on the prison guards that they wear, sir. Bro, I was on it! You don't think it was a guard who was attacked? Have you received a report of any guard being attacked by an animal? No, not that I've heard, sir, but it's possible I just couldn't understand what they were saying. Okay, wait, so this means I was right. This guy dressed up, the most buff guard you will ever see now. <laughs> uh, dressed up in the uniform, maybe tore it a little bit on, like, the arms. Mm, oh, so buff. And then, um, he was like, oh, I'm gonna take the prisoner, put the handcuffs on and off. And then, you know, Nightly sees yeah. this isn't him. He's like, oh my gosh, holy crap. <laughs> like, soccer, soccer punches him. Punches him. Except he doesn't go to the hospital because it's, uh, that guy. And he said he was, like, hurt in training or something? Didn't he say that? Or did he say he Wait, was sleeping? Are you saying so- are you saying that, like, J. Albert, Albert dressed up as an officer, went- like, went for the tunnel of the Nightly Cell, then that's the guy Nightly attacked to steal the keys? And then Albert went back and was like, oh man, I'm injured! <laughs> you think that's what happened? Maybe. Who well, else dressed up hmm, in the guard's uniform? Then it was someone else wearing a guard's uniform. I see. I have evidence that shows what this cap is. It is... The stolen uniform. Yeah. 